It is great to be here among so many familiar faces on a Saturday morning. And uh, I have to say, I also drove here in my sleep, right? Like every day, just come here. And I was like, wow, if every day could be like today, where there was no traffic, that was amazing. <laughs> So a week ago Friday, I went to see a movie. I went to see On the Basis of Sex, the story of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. How many of you have seen that movie? Okay, not enough hands. You all need to go see that movie. It was amazing. And, um, and, I, and I'm actually, now I have, I'm, I have her audible, which is her telling her story. So I'm going to listen to that now. While I was watching that movie, I was both inspired and infuriated at the same time. I was inspired by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She is an incredible woman. Actually, I am now incredibly even more inspired by Ty Lee, who is also <laughs> an incredible woman. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg is a beacon of light for me and how one person can make change, dramatic change, in the whole world. I was infuriated. I was infuriated because for such a powerful woman, the things that happened to her in the early stages of her career, I, I was just infuriated to see her beat down in that way. And to realize, as I was watching it, how personal that felt, because it was so relatable to me in my own experience. And then to realize that she brought that case before the court in 1970. That's almost 50 years ago. And here we are in the tech industry, and it doesn't feel that different. And that really infuriated me. As a matter of fact, we're going backwards. In 1991, 36% of all computer technology roles were held by women. In 2015, 25% of all technology-related roles were held by women. We have to make a change. We cannot let the next generation down. We cannot be here 50 years from now, or even five years from now, without making dramatic change. Does this look normal to you? <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, this looks all too normal. I ran a little experiment. Two weeks ago, I was at a, a tech conference. And I had two days of meetings lined up. And so I decided to tabulate in my head how many men did I meet with and how many women did I meet with. In two days, I met with 21 men and four women. It has to change. And the only way it's going to change is with each and every one of you. You are the spark that will ignite the change. Every single one of you, this room, women in cloud, every one of you makes a difference. We are clearing the path. Every time you speak out, every time you share an idea, every time you step forward, we are clearing the path. We are laying the foundation to change the face of diversity in this industry. Every single one of you. Changing stereotypes. The next generation is counting on you. I am counting on you. What does that mean? It means you have to put aside your fear. Fears like what Ty was explaining. You have to put aside your fear of failure. You have to know you will fail. And you have to know that's okay. 
put it aside, and with courage and conviction, continue to move forward. Continue to move towards your goals. Ask yourself three questions. Who am I? What do I stand for? And what will I be known for? Who are you? What matters to you? Not what matters to someone else. Not what the expectations are of you. Not what your parents think or your friends think or your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend think. What do you think? Every day we are bombarded with opinions. You turn on CNBC, you hear opinions about the economy. You turn on the news, you hear opinions about the world. You come to work, you hear opinions about your job. What do you think? What is your opinion? What is your point of view? Who are you? There have been many defining moments in my life, but none so poignant as motherhood. <laughs> so the, the very first time that I really had to decide who am I was when I was pregnant with my daughter, my first child. And I'll tell you, if people think they can give you opinions when you're pregnant, people give you a lot of opinions, right? And they will tell you there is a right way and a wrong way to parent your child. Right? And, you know, don't eat this. You must eat that. Don't do this. Oh, when they're born, don't do that. Do this. Right? And um, there is not a right or wrong answer to that. There is not a right or wrong way. You have to know. That's when I realized for the first time, who am I? What am I going to make of this? What relationship am I going to build? And how am I going to do that? Who are you? And what do you stand for? What's your passion? What do you believe? What do you want to accomplish? Understanding what is within your integrity. One of my first roles, I was working for a, a multinational health care company. Up until the moment, that they handed me a little card. This was in the early 90s, and the little card said, what do you believe about managed healthcare? And the card said, you believe managed healthcare is good for the, it's good for the patient. It increases quality of care. It creates better options. Now, this was the very beginning of managed healthcare, and I knew that it was actually about saving costs. And I looked at that, and I felt like it was a lie. And I would be out of my integrity to stay there. And so I left the healthcare industry. What do you stand for? And what do you want to be known for? What values, what innovations, what ideas? What is your brand? What will people, what do you want people to say about you when you are not in the room? A few months ago, my daughter was home from college, and um, I accidentally overheard her talking to a friend on the phone. <laughs> and she was talking about me. <laughs> and she was describing me to her friend. And I listened, and I realized that I was everything I wanted to be. Aww. How do you get there? <laughs> when I thought about that to talk to you today, I thought about it is about finding your voice using your voice, and amplifying your voice. Finding your voice. The beginning of my time at Microsoft, when I was not even a group manager, 
I was in a meeting with my corporate vice president talking to our executive vice president. So this was my boss's boss's boss talking to his boss. <laughs> and my corporate vice president was explaining that we were going to have a challenge with Windows 2000 because of the product. And I sat there thinking, I don't think so. I think we're going to have a problem because of the readiness. But I didn't say anything because I was not going to contradict my corporate vice president in front of my executive vice president. And so after the meeting, I sent an email to my CVP. And I said, I explained how I thought this was more of a readiness issue and what we should do. He sent me back an email with just a few words. Why didn't you speak up in the meeting? Wow. So I ask you, how many times have you been in a meeting where everyone in the meeting is nodding their heads in agreement with whatever the speaker is saying and agreeing, and in your head you're thinking, huh, this doesn't seem right. That's different than my experience. I have a different point of view. But wow, there's a lot of people in this meeting, and they're all agreeing. So I must be wrong. Maybe I shouldn't say anything. You should say something. There's a reason you are in that meeting. You are in that meeting to share your point of view. You are in that meeting to disrupt the head nods and to share your perspective. You have a unique perspective, and you need to share it. Your perspective is the result of your values, your belief, your experiences, your upbringing. Every single one of you will have a different perspective, and that is needed. I want to share with you what a French artist did in um, uh, uh, a, in a way of shaping sculptures, anamorphic sculptures. I want to share a little video with you. changes. As you walk around the sculpture, the picture changes. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. This happens to you every day. You will see things differently than anyone else in the room. And the only way anybody will know is if you find your voice, you find your unique perspective, and you speak up. Then, what you need to do is you need to give yourself the freedom to be yourself and the grace to fail. Because when you share your perspective, you open yourself up for people to disagree with you, to tell you you're wrong, and to create conflict in the room. But we're in the technology industry. We're all about innovation. And innovation only happens when there's conflict. Innovation only happens when there are different points of view. And you can come together and create a new idea. 
So you need to face that conflict with courage and with conviction, and you need to share your voice, and you need to share your perspective. You need to silence the negativity in your head, and you need to say what's on your mind. And that means that you need to socialize your ideas, and that takes practice. You have to practice, practice, practice. All the time, sharing your ideas. Not waiting till they're perfect, not waiting till you've formed them all through, not waiting till you have all the right data, <laughs> but share your ideas. Share your ideas so that other people can build on them. Share your ideas so other people can give you their perspective. Share your ideas so you make them better. And you continue to innovate. And sometimes you give them away, and sometimes they become something even bigger for you. But you need to share your perspective and share your ideas, go into your meetings with a point of view, and make yourself heard. In this industry, we're all moving very fast. We are actually building the plane while we fly it, right? <laughs> As an entrepreneur, you are building your business and managing your business and thinking ahead all at the same time. You won't have time to wait for perfect. You don't have time to wait. You need to make sure that you're bringing together all of those ideas and you're innovating, innovating, innovating every single day. The next thing you need to do is amplify your voice. Turn up the volume. Break through with your perspective in the world. Be bold, think bold, act bold. When I first started in this role with our partners four years ago, my mission is to enable businesses all over the world to grow to build their business, to create economic opportunity for people within the community in which they live and build their business with Microsoft. Then I was challenged by my CEO to go bigger, that my goal is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. But now, I believe my mission is even bigger. My mission is to change the face of diversity in the technology industry. And I do that through you. One person at a time, each and every one of your voices, everything that you do, every success that you have, paves the way for the future, for the change that we need in this industry. And reinforces the change we need to make. And as you amplify your voice, amplify the voices of those around you too. As you share your perspective, offer the opportunity for other people to share their perspective too. Create space for everyone to come into that conversation and share their perspective and rumble through the change with courage and conviction so that you generate new ideas, so that you innovate, so that you keep moving forward and you make everyone's good ideas known and give them credit for it. So explore who you are. What do you stand for? Who do you want to be? What will you be known for? Find your voice, your perspective. Use your voice. Amplify your voice. Practice being you. Be courageous and lean in. When you rise to the challenge, great things will happen. You find your inner Ruth. Oh. Be the beacon of light. 
You are a beacon of light. Share your perspective. And every time you speak up, that light grows stronger. Thank you.